For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. wondering how I look with gray hair at the age of 25. Why do I expect to be gray at 25? Well, I intend to still be living with Irma Peterson, and brother, if that doesn't do it, nothing will. Now, please, don't misunderstand me. Irma's my dearest friend, but some of the things she says are so maddening that I am about to tip my wig. For instance, the other day I said... Irma? Yes, Jane? There's a movement on to make Hawaii the 49th state. They want to bring it into the Union, and I understand Washington is all for it. Oh, so am I, Jane, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? Well, how are they going to get it through the Panama Canal? (laughs) See what I mean? Now, things like that, I'm a little too tired to answer. And why am I tired? Well, this past week, Professor Kropotkin opened his own little cafe, and all of us have been helping him with the chores in our spare time. Right now, we're in our apartment, and Irma's typing the menu for tomorrow. How are you coming along, honey? Oh, very slowly. Uh, Are there two or three E's in cream? (laughs) I think one is enough, honey. Are you sure? He uses that heavy cream. (laughs) Yes, honey, I'm sure. And please hurry, huh? The professor will be here soon to pick him up. Irma, what's the matter now? Oh, I don't like this menu. I'm too worried about what the customers will think. Sweetie, it isn't up to you. Just put down what the professor told you over the phone. All right, but don't blame me if no one eats the potatoes. The potatoes? Yes, how can anybody eat them when they're French fried, mashed, and all rotten? Irma, that's all rotten. (laughs) Look, sweetie, I'll take care of the menu. All right, Jane. Oh, I think I'll iron that little apron I wear in the evening when I wait on the tables. Oh, I meant to tell you, honey, you look adorable in it. Oh, thank you, Jane. You know, I just can't wait till I finish work at the office so I can hurry home and help the professor at the restaurant. Well, we're all getting a kick out of it because we love the professor so. Irma, what's that? Oh, the tips I got last night fell out of the apron pocket. Oh, how did you do, honey? Oh, I got about 65 cents. Well, what's that piece of paper? Oh, I waited on Al. That's a thank you note. (laughs) A thank you note? What does King Midas say? Uh, It says, I didn't leave money because when you spend it, it disappears. So save this note. It will last through all the years. (laughs) That reckless playboy. Hello? Who? Who? No, uh, Professor Kropotkin isn't here right now, but we expect him shortly. Who? Mr. Hackett? Oh, you'll call back. Thank you. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. (laughs) Hello, Al, honey. Well, kids, the professor isn't the only one in business. I got things going for me, too. Naturally. Um, Another one of your priceless deals like the last one you had? Bleaching shoelaces and selling them for spaghetti? (laughs) No, couldn't get a patent. But my new one is a beaut, and so timely. Well, what is it, Al? It's a derby specially treated with bicarbonate of soda, so that after a lecture, when you have to eat your hat, you don't get indigestion. (laughs) What do you think of it, chicken? Oh, Al, it's great. Gee, Jane, is it any wonder when I see him I get goose pimples? No, honey, I can understand that. He leaves me cold, too. (laughs) Now, just a second, Jane. I know the opinion you got of me ain't got no snow on top of it. But let me tell you something. If it wasn't for my shifty eyes, a lot of customers would be sneaking out without paying their check. No, Al, when you're right, you're right. I admit I myself saw you grab several who were trying to get out without paying, but... I still can't figure out how you get wise to them. Well, I've been doing it for years. (laughs) That is, uh, watching for them guys, you understand? Yeah, I understand. Well, uh, Al, I've been doing my share at the restaurant, too. 
I think flirting with the fellows has helped business. Wait a minute, chicken. What's wrong, Al? You mean you've been flirting with the boys? Oh, harmlessly, Al. Uh, when they ask me if I have frog's legs, I say, look for yourself. <laughs> oh, that's different. Oh, I'm glad you understand, Al. And, you know, the customers have all been very nice to me. Uh, I made a mistake and gave a man four fives for a $10 bill, and without batting an eyelash, he gave me one of the fives back. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotsky. <laughs> Hello, Janey and Irma, my two little ice skaters. One spinning ahead, the other with a head spinning. <laughs> Why, Professor, making your little jokes already. Hmm? You must be happy. Oh, why shouldn't I be? After all these years, my lifelong dream has come true. I own my own little restaurant, thanks to you and Erma and Richard and Al. Well, we're just as happy as you are that everything's so perfect. Well, not so perfect. As we say in the restaurant business, there is a fly in the soup, and her name is Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> well, what's wrong with Miss O'Reilly? What's wrong her cooking? It's too plain. I would like to give the customer something different, so I asked her to make the clam chowder with a continental flavor. Well, did she do it? Well, she tried. But the only way I knew it was continental was because it tasted like the bottom of the English Channel. <laughs> if she would only let me do the cook. Well, we have to be careful there. You don't want to hurt her feelings. Well, of course not. And besides, she has a nasty way of getting even. She'll raise my room rent. <laughs> A very delicate predicament. It's like saying not guilty to a judge while the silverware has fallen out of your sleeve. <laughs> well, I'll simply have to tell her. Oh, well, that's probably her now. Now, Professor, remember, no scenes. All right, no, no scenes. Come in. Hello, everybody. Oh, so there you are, Professor. No, 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 take it easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. Frowning will only give you wrinkles. Oh, is that so? Yes, and on your face, there's no more room. <laughs> Misha Elman, Now, you. Mrs. O'Reilly, please, don't start anything. Well, I've heard he's going around criticizing my cooking to everyone, and I won't have it. You won't have it? Listen to her. Yes, listen to me. Only one thing made your restaurant. My wonderful home cooking. All you talk about is home cooking, home cooking. I got news for you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Your cooking can put a person in a home for incurables. <laughs> Say those things. Oh, don't cry, Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> Professor, look what you've done. I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. O'Reilly. I, I didn't mean to insult you. Oh, if you only knew that cooking was my greatest pride. Oh, I understand, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, I remember back in Ireland when I was a young girl. We had a pot bellied stove, and all the young lads in the neighborhood would come over, and I would cook and bake for them on the stove. After a while, they began to think of me and the stove as one. <laughs> Old pot belly O'Reilly, they used to call it. <laughs> oh, those romantic days. To think how the years fly away. No, please, Mrs. O'Reilly, don't try to get the best of me by crying. Well, oh, I can't help crying. It's the woman in me. <laughs> Mrs. O'Reilly, there's a woman in you? <laughs> then tell me, what is that camouflage you are wearing on the outside? Why, you... Oh, now, quiet, quiet. The phone is ringing. Hello? Who's this? Oh, Mr. Hackett again, yes. Yes, the professor's here. Just a minute, please. It's for you, professor. Oh, thank you, Jane. Hello? Yes, it's only me, Professor Kropotkin. What? Yeah, hold it a moment, please. I got to get my breath. What's up, Professor? The, the man on the phone wants to buy my restaurant. What shall I say? Well, what are you going to say, Professor? I don't know. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Hackett. Somebody advised me. Well, you're happy there, aren't you? I've never been so happy. Are you making money? Uh, yes, according to my balance sheet here. Well, the total here shows a big profit. Well, then don't be a chump, Professor. You can afford to be in a penna. Oh, that's right. Who does this Hackett think I am? A fool? Mr. Hackett, you sure got your nerve. You think you're talking to a fool? <laughs> I'm a very smart businessman. I got the gold mine here. 
I wouldn't sell to you. I don't care if you do buy the store across town. I'm keeping this one. The same to you. Jump in the lake. <laughs> well, you certainly told him. Yes, and it certainly gives a man a wonderful feeling to have confidence in himself and to know that he is on the road to success. Uh, Janie, when you get a minute, I would like you to check those figures. But I'm sure Irma put down everything. Irma! <laughs> Irma? Professor, I think I'd better look at that report. Let me see. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yes, to lose in one week. Janie, what are you talking about? That's impossible. Chicken, what did you do Irma, now? Irma, how could you mislead the poor professor? Oh, don't pick on me all the time. And to think I had a chance to sell the store. <laughs> I even went so far as to tell the man he was talking to a fool. <laughs> And you know something it was? <laughs> oh, I'm ruined. I'm ruined. Well, Professor, I'm surprised at you. Didn't you know any better? How should I know any better? I'm a restaurant man. I left the books to Irma. And she kept saying, the business is liquid. The business is liquid. Now I know what she meant by the business is liquid. What? I was drowning. <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. When Betty McGuire of Havertown, Pennsylvania married, she traded a modeling career for that of housewife and mother. But soon Betty McGuire's smile shone in another setting, too. As a hobby, she gave lessons in charm at a nearby school for Philadelphia children. The charm classes grew in popularity. Now the school features her course. Tots and teenagers look to Betty for training in poise, etiquette, and modeling. And she's a shining example for them, even to her pepsodent smile. Betty told us... I'll always teach the value of a sparkling smile. And I know from my own experience that pepsodent gets teeth really bright. Like Betty McGuire, people all over America agree. The smile that wins is the pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests... Thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Irium over the brands they'd been using at home. Yes, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of 3 to 1 for its cool, minty taste, for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try a new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. <laughs> stages of dejection. Al is pacing the room. The professor has his head buried in his hands. And Irma? Irma is sitting there crying and giggling. This I cannot understand. Irma, if you want to cry, cry. But why must you giggle at the same time? I can't help it, Jane. The tears keep falling on my knees and they tickle. <laughs> Well, there's no sense in crying about it, honey, but I never saw such bookkeeping in my life. I can't make it out. For instance, what is this item? Five dollars for a bottle of whiskey and ten cents for toast. I was trying to make rye crisp. Great. <laughs> and, Professor, if I'm not being too personal, why did you buy twice as much food as you needed? Well, that's the only way to make big profits, according to the Aminelli principles of buying. Who's Aminelli? It's the man who's selling me twice as much as I need. <laughs> oh, what's the use of talking? It's done. Well, I admit you can't sell a restaurant to Mr. Hackett after the way you insulted him, but, well, the least we can do is try to make the business pay. How, with Mrs. O'Reilly's cooking? I'll have no more talk about my cooking. For your information, my food is very nourishing. I admit it's put extra weight on my hips, but everyone tells me it's very stylish. Stylish? Yes, they all say I look like the new Hudson. <laughs> now, look, the two of you, let's dispense with all the personal discussions. We have one common problem, and we must face it together. Well, what's the problem, Jane? Maybe I can help. Please, Irma, you've helped enough. Al, have you any ideas how we can stimulate business in the restaurant? Uh, there are many economic steps open to us. 
My favorite is the method used by the pilgrims. You may recall the famous case of the farmer's wife who, in order to save money, made her own preserves. I never heard of that. Historical incident. But this unfortunate wife, while working over a large vat of jam, had the bad luck to fall in. This was to become known in later years in financial circles as the law of self-preservation. <laughs> Please, Jane, let me continue. We're in a spot, and every idea counts. Now, let me think. Got it. Let's hear it, Al. Anything. What our restaurant needs is showmanship, glamour, that, that Hollywood touch. And I know how we get it. Well, out with it, Al. We tie in the food on our menu with famous moving pictures, like, uh, we could say, um, a Spanish omelet from the Loves of Carmen. Or a uh, fried rabbit from the Lady in Ermine. <laughs> from the return of Lassie. <laughs> Irma, please relax. And Al, I don't know when I've heard anything more idiotic. Well, always got an ace up my sleeve. And there's only one man who can help us. Al, if you call who I think you're calling, I'll scream. Don't let him try, Jane, if you're thinking. Who are you calling, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> ah, got a problem. Professor Kropotkin's restaurant is going on the rocks. How can we build up the business? Huh? The name is important, like uh, the automat, Shrafts, Childs? Yeah, I know. What about it? Put a big sign in front of the joint saying Childs? But, Joe, isn't that illegal? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. That's how we get away with it. Under the name Childs, in small print, we say, must be accompanied by their parents. Hang up, Al. Please, Jane. An ingenious idea, Joe, but did not ring the bell here. Thanks for your efforts, and goodbye, noble friend. Look, everyone, I don't think this problem calls for any divine inspiration. All that's required is concentrated effort. We've all got to go out and, and advertise the place to our friends. But how do we do that? It's very simple. For instance, I'll make it my job to tell all the girls at the office. Mrs. O'Reilly, who can you talk to? Well, me eyelashes are down at the beauty parlor getting a henna rinse. <laughs> so I'll go right down there now and tell the girls about it. Well, now that's the spirit. How about you, Professor? Well, I think I'll go down to the musician's local. <laughs> oh, well, now we're getting someplace. How about you, Al? Where can you go? Oh, I got a spot in mine. <laughs> you can depend on me. Oh, that's swell. And let's all try to get a big crowd at the restaurant tonight. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Forgot to say goodbye to you. Chicken, you're crying. <laughs> they didn't tell me what to do. I know, chicken. Gosh, can it be that they don't have any confidence in me? Well, uh, chicken... <laughs> Nobody loves me. Oh, don't say that, chicken. I love you. No, you don't. Of course I do. Someday I'm going to marry you and let you raise and support our children. <laughs> chicken, you're everything to me. Oh, words, words, words. Nothing but words. Why don't you say something besides words? <laughs> All right, chicken. You don't believe I love you? I'll prove it. I'll give you an opportunity to redeem yourself for the mistake you made in the books. Gosh, how, how can I, Al? I'm going to let you go to the place where I was going. Where, Al? Well, I read in the papers that there's a meeting today at the city commissioners, and I was going down there to spread the word about the restaurant. Oh, gee, Al, you're smart. I wish I had your fertilized mind. <laughs> Thanks, chicken. And to show you how much I love you, you can go to the city commissioner instead of me. Gosh, Al, I, I wouldn't know what to say. Nothing to it, chicken. You merely say something like, um, if you gentlemen are looking for something different in appetizing dishes, go to Kropotkin's where the tables are spread with the best. Got it? Of course. The place safe, let's have it back once. <laughs> Let's see, uh, if you gentlemen are looking for something different in appetizing dishes, go to Kropotkin's where the tables are spread with the best. Chicken, that's wonderful.
Be on your way fast before you forget it. Oh, all right, Al. Oh, and don't worry, I'll try my best, and if that doesn't work, I'll try something else. <laughs> Peterson, you know, people just don't know, just don't give you credit for what you know. <laughs> Imagine Al thinking I couldn't remember a simple thing like, if you gentlemen are looking for something different, go to the restaurant and find Kropotkin spread on the table. <laughs> Just wait until I meet the city conditioner. <laughs> city conditioner? Oh, was that it? Or was it kitty submissioner? <laughs> oh, well, I got one thing right. I'll get the other. <laughs> So you had no luck, Janie? No. The girls all said they have their favorite restaurants. How about you, Al? I spoke to some of the boys on the park bench, but no dice. <laughs> you see, the fellas can go a long time without buying food. They got the squirrels trained to bring them peanuts. <laughs> well, I guess this is the end. I should have sold it to Mr. Hackett when I had the chance. Don't give up yet, folks. We haven't heard from Irma. Irma? Where did she go? Uh, it's a secret. But the dame may redeem herself more than you expect. Oh, please, Al. We all know Irma. She'll be lucky if she can find her way home. <laughs> don't sell chicken short, Jane. I know most of the time she sounds like she don't know what the score is. But I got confidence in that kid. And to prove it, I sent her to the city commissioner to bring some of the boys down here to eat. Oh, please, Al. You don't think for one minute... It... Oh, my goodness. What's the matter? It's Irma. And look at all the men following her. My chicken came through. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> this way, gentlemen, this way, please. Go to work, Mrs. O'Reilly. Irma, darling, how did you do it? Oh, it was nothing. Chicken, I'd like to talk to you. Let's step inside the office. Oh, sure, Al, what is it? Those men look kind of shabby for politicians. Are you sure you went to the city commission? Yes, just want to check. Stay here. Be right back. How do you do, sir? How do, brother? Uh, keep right on eating. Don't want to disturb you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner? Yeah, I, uh, I see your friends are eating like it was on the house. Well, <laughs> it is on the house. That young lady invited us down. I don't understand. Aren't you gentlemen connected with the city commission? No, brother. We're all from the city mission. <laughs> Never pay for anything. Aye. <laughs> What's wrong, brother? Oh, brother. <laughs> Got to talk to that chick. Hello, Al. Everything all right? Al, what's the matter? Your eyes are shaking. <laughs> Chicken, you have created a new Waterloo. But don't say anything. Here comes the professor. Hello, Emma. Al. Al, what's the matter? You look green and you haven't eaten yet. <laughs> Uh, she, she did. Nothing's wrong. Well, then be happy. Smile. Have you ever seen such a crowd? And look, they're all eating like it was for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, it is for nothing. Huh? Irma got these guys from the city mission. What? No wonder every time I try to give them a check, they throw their arms around me and sing for he's a jolly good fellow. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? Things are really humming, gang. We, we couldn't do more business if we gave the food away. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Wait a minute, Al and Irma. What's going on here, Al? Why are you so pale? Chicken, we might as well tell her. Jane, Chicken was supposed to go to the city commissioner. Instead, she went to the city mission. Irma, how could you do a thing like that? Well, well, it's your fault. Mine? Yes, remember yesterday I pointed to the window that said osery, and you said the rain had washed off a couple of letters and it was grocery? Yes, but how could you make the same mistake with city commissioner? Well, when I saw a city mission, I figured it had rained there, too. Uh, what's the use of arguing about it now? Should we stop them guys out there from eating? Oh, no, no, Al. The poor souls are hungry. Let them eat. We are broke anyway, so we'll be a little broken. Oh, 
gee, Professor, you're so sweet about things. You're what people call a good sanitarium. <laughs> Irma, that's just what I'm going as soon as I close the door. <laughs> Professor Kropotkin? Uh, what do you want, please? My name is Hackett. Oh, you're the man that wanted to buy my place. Yes. Look here, Kropotkin. Just because your restaurant is crowded and doing a terrific business doesn't mean you can afford to ignore my offer. Because I'm here to double it. Double? Yes. I've never seen a place so crowded. Why, those people couldn't eat more if it was free. (laughs) Well, I think I should tell you. You can't tell me anything. I've been in this business too long. I'm a man of quick action. Here's my check. I consider the deal closed. Good day. Good day. What happened? (laughs) Oh, Professor, isn't it wonderful? Irma, if it wasn't for you, this never would have happened. Do do you forgive me, Jane? Forgive you, sweetie. We adore you. But in the future, when you plan something like this, give us a little warning, huh? Well, that's hard for me to do, Jane. You see, a lot of things go on in my mind without me knowing about it. (laughs) And you know something? She may be lightheaded, but take it from me, you're always in the dark with my friend Irma. Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. That's borne out by the vote of thousands who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of 3 to 1. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better, makes their breath cleaner, and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. They've seen Pepsodent with Irium remove the film that makes teeth look dull, uncover new brightness in their smiles. Try it, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Well, the professor is rid of the restaurant And after paying all the bills and repaying the loan We're right back where we started Yup, the professor is back at the gypsy tea room Al is back in the unemployment line Mrs. O'Reilly is back as a landlady And Irma is back to normal She still doesn't know what's going on (laughs) Irma, honey, where's my magazine? I don't know. All right, where's my sewing basket? Gosh, I can't remember. Well, I just don't want to sit here. I think I'll write some letters. Where's my fountain pen? I don't know. Well, just turn on the radio. I'll listen to some music. All right, Jane. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody's looking for that famous comedy team. So the question of the day is, where's Amos? Where's Andy? Gee, they expect me to know everything. (laughs) Well, what they expect and what they get are two different things when they're dealing with my friend Irma. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard. Mark Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsin and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin, and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music is under the direction of Lud Ruskin. This is Wendell Nile speaking, CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>